Elisha Sirkin. Rushing ahead, what a save! Elias Sorokin. Check it on loads! Love save Sorokin. Are they not getting through? No, sir, not one. They must have some kind of protective shield over that hall. Knights, pull up, pull up! Got you covered, Big Daddy. Hughes has it, slot, big stop, rebound, oh, just stricken. And they got shields too. And that's going to do it. So the Islanders, yep, surgical for sure. Who pulls back-to-back -back shutouts. So you get nothing. You lose. Good day. To move on and talk about the New York Islanders. And the Islanders got their first win this uh, last week in Chicago after losing the first two games against Florida and Carolina. But the story this week, Anthony, I think it's obvious. Ilya Sorokin, 3-0, two shutouts, one goal against, a career-high 42 saves versus Vegas. Take and, it away. And mind you, um, that game against Chicago, they allowed, a, they allowed a goal 21 seconds left. I mean, this guy was, was 21 seconds away from having three shutouts in six games. Um, He's he's been he's been really good. Um, he was really good in Chicago and Arizona. He, he was good. Um, and then in Vegas, uh, you know, he was phenomenal. Um, you know, the Islanders allowing 42 shots. That's unlike them. Um, but Sorokin Sorokin shut the door in Vegas. Uh, he made some he made like at least two like really good highlight real saves. Um, oddly enough, they both came on key and Colsar. And then literally at the very end of the game with like one second left, I thought it was going to be a Chicago redo. The puck came out in front of the net all alone. I know the players got loose and he robbed Shea Theodore as the, as time expired. But, um, you know, he's, he's, he's been, he's been really, really good for them. Uh, you know, they started waking up in that game against Chicago, getting back to Islander hockey, um, Arizona, obviously they're a really bad team. So it is what it is. You expect. Yeah, but them. Arizona was all over them in the first period. Yeah, they were. They, no, they, they were. Yeah. Um, but you know, the Islanders were supposed to beat them and they did, but you know, you're right. Sorokin again, held it down in the first period in that game. And then the Vegas game, <clears throat> I thought for stretches, the Islanders did were the better team, but in the second period, Vegas was guns blazing and he, and he shut Ugh. the door. Um, you know, he's, uh, now, you know, they have a decision to make. Varlamov got activated today off the injured reserve. So he's on his way back. Um, and you look at it and you think to yourself, you know, if Varlamov plays on Saturday against Nashville uh, and then Sorokin starts, because after that, they've had a long break. After this game against Nashville, they have another four days off before they play Montreal. So if Varlamov starts that game and then Sorokin plays that game on November 4th, you're talking 11 days between starts. So I don't think that would be wise for Barry Trotz to, to go with um, Varlamov in this game here on Saturday especially after coming off two shutouts and as well as he's playing, um, you know, go, you got to go with Sorokin. You can't let him go that long without playing. And for Verlamov, he hasn't played at all yet this season. So for him to wait another, you know, four days after Saturday to make his debut doesn't really hurt anybody. So I, I think, um, I think it's an easy decision there. As for the rest of the team, uh, like I said, they start, they start to get back to their game, play more solid Islander hockey, um, you know, Barzell, Barzell has been good on his line with him, Lee, um, and Palmieri, uh, and the Pajot, Wallstrom and Prise line has been good. I mean, they're, they're doing their job for checking, causing, causing up fits for other teams. And yes, good cue there. He did sp split up the B line. Um, he called them out after the loss against, uh, Florida. He, he wasn't, he wasn't happy with, uh, that line and he swapped, uh, Beauvillier, and Bailey, so Bailey moved to the top line uh, to play with Lee and Barzell, and it worked because Bailey had two two points in that game against Vegas, um, and it seems like he woke up a little bit. And then Beauvillier looks a little refreshed too. So, um, sorry, Paul Mary playing on a different line, but Brock Nelson's starting to wake up, so that's good for them. Uh, and obviously, as we all know, Pelic and Pollock are you know they're they're true selves. They give you they give you you know their their honest effort every game. And shut down other teams. So um, on the up, you know they're looking good. And listen, when you look back on it, the two games that the two teams they lost to are two of the four teams that are still undefeated. I mean the the Panthers and the Hurricanes. So they lost to two good teams. So, um, but you know we'll see. They got Nashville now, and then Montreal, two teams that they should beat. So um, hopefully, you know from here on out, you know they're going to continue to get better. And listen, 
13 game road trip. There's six games into it as an Islander fan. You, you got you got to be happy with a three two and one record to start the season on the road. You, and you also, uh, what are they? They're good at home. When they get done with this road trip, they got 28 more games on the road and 41 at home. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's nice. a big advantage for them. Absolutely, that's a big, that's a big, big advantage. Yeah, I, I, I love what I've seen from Ilya Sorokin. I mean, I, I will say that for about 40 to 45 minutes, give or take, he was kind of untested against Arizona. You got to, and again, like Anthony said, you got to beat the bad teams. Arizona's bad. You got to beat them. And they beat them convincingly. So Ilya Sorokin, I don't think he was as nearly as tested as much in that game, but when he was, he was, he was there. He was, he was true to, he was true to form, true, tall to the task. And then against Vegas, I thought Ilya Sorokin played the best game of his entire career so far. He was incredible. He was the reason why they won that game. And there, there's nothing else. Yeah, to say about yeah. that, it just did. The Islanders were outplayed for the majority of that game. I, I, I know you, you might have been a little generous there, but Vegas really, really, probably deserved to win that game in terms of the way that they were carrying the play. But Ilya Sorokin said no. Ily, Ilya Sorokin refused to lose that game, and that's why they won. So uh, good on Ilya for being as, as good as he was in that game. He's got two back-to-back shutouts. He, he, uh, he deserves it. He was probably one of the players of the week and he deserved to be. I thought the Islanders, I, I, I thought they were okay. I, I, I still don't see them playing at the level where they were last year down the stretch and into the playoffs and so on. They'll get better. I have, I have confidence in that. I st- like I said, I still think they're going to win the division. I, I think they're going to get better, but I, I, they need to play more Barry Trotz Islanders hockey. And they haven't done so to the best of their ability so far, but I I have confidence that they're they're going to get better, and they will. They'll they'll pick everything up. Like I said, the only thing that I'm really worried about right now, if I'm an Islander fan, is the defense outside of the top pairing. The top pairing is great. Top pairing is one of the best pairings in the NHL. But where is the defense after Scott Mayfield? Because the Daniel Char looks cooked. Andy Green looks like a corpse that you're probably going to see as a prop in someone's Halloween decorations for their house. Um, <laughs> I, who else do they have at this point? Sebastian Ajo. Well, I mean, Zidane Char is 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 going to dress up as a cone for Halloween. Halloween. Hold on, a yeah, really big this freaking off. cone, but a cone. Let's cut this off. <laughs> oh, hey, we got joining so us guys. right now, Darius Kasparaitis. The light, the light post, and the, the first that was just. <laughs> yeah. oh the, the, I did not expect he was going to say yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that and then awesome. that's amazing. Um, um but we we got it. We got to get back to the Islanders yeah. right now to finish up that because there was one stat I needed to quote for you guys that still surprised me, Anthony. There's only one team that averages more shots against in the league right now, and that's the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, does that surprise you at all, especially with the New York Islanders? Yeah, they're not a team that really gives you much. But no. um, then again, they do, for the most part, aside from that Vegas game, they, 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 they do limit you to the outside. They don't really give up grade A chances. So a lot of the shots they give up are, you know, teams just putting pucks on the net from pretty much anywhere. Uh, but even still, you would like to see them tighten that up. Um, you know, like I said, the next two games against Nashville and Montreal, they, they should beat both of those teams. Um, you know, get them feeling even better about themselves coming out of the first leg of this road trip. Uh, but like I said earlier, three, two, and one after the first six games, you got to be happy with that. Um, you know, Sor- Sorokin's on fire, um, and their offensive guys like Barzell's starting to show life. Wallstrom's been consistent the whole season so far. So, um, you know, as long as long as they just keep playing the way they're playing, though, they'll eventually get back to Islander hockey, and you're already seeing signs of it. And then, as you mentioned. You know, they're getting these 13 games out of the way on the road. And then for a while, they're going to be at home. And they're a really good home team. So if this 13-game road trip is over, if they're a couple of games over 500, um, you know, or even at 500, they're, they're in a good spot. But if they can even come out a couple of games over, I mean, that that's going to set them up perfectly for, you know, for the rest of the season. So not um, only that, but I mean, I, I'm sorry to cut you off here, but oh, I, go ahead. you got you to gotta bring this up, too. 
they're going into a new arena. How pumped are they and the fans going to be for yeah. playing in that new arena? Oh, that, yeah. that's and an arena made for them. Boost. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a it's a gigantic boost for them. So if the Absolutely. Islanders come out of this, I, I, I like you said, if they're maybe anywhere from like three to five games above five hundred by the time that happens, forget about it. I, I mean that I'm not going to say smooth sailing to win the division because you never know what someone yeah. like Washington can do but to make the playoffs. They can put it in cruise control. They could, yeah. It, once you get into a point where like you know that you're going really going to have a playoff spot. Then you could start, you know, doing that types of things. And if you really don't care about the division that much at that point, then you could start resting your players and stuff for the playoffs. So yeah. I mean, it, it it's a huge, huge advantage for them. Yeah, and mind you, they're they're a team that statistically gets better in the middle of the season. They start off slow and they end slow, but in the meat of the season, the middle of the season, that's where that's where they're at their best. Um, so it's. I think as an Islander fan, you got to be happy with it, where they are right now. And, um, you know, who knows? Maybe maybe they stumbled into a Wally Pip situation here with Sorokin Varlamov. I mean, I think I think the guys deserve to to, to play more. I mean, uh, well, he's got the nine. He's got the nine thirty three save percentage, which obviously is the same exact save percentage as Sturkin. I feel like those two guys are always going to be just linked with each other. Yeah, but, um, they're, they're always going to have but, that. Yeah, always. And I, I, I know I said the same thing in the playoffs. But I, I got to say it again here, and I, I know that Barry Trotz seems to just go against the grain because Barry Trotz is going to do what Barry Trotz w- wants to do. But how do you go back to Varlamov in this next start? How do you not go with Sorokin after two straight shutouts? I you think you go with Sorokin because if you want him to be the number one, you don't want him sitting for more than 10 days. That's what I just said. You yeah. saw Alexander Georgiev do that, and his production dropped. Um, yeah. That was under David Quinn. Uh, then – so I think you go with Sorok- uh, Sorokin for the next one, but you do got to come back with Varlamov because right now he is the number one. Of course, but I, I, like I'm saying, you just you got to ride the hot end, and and not only that, but this is your future. Varlamov is not your future. Sorokin mm-hmm. is your future. So you, you got to start really marinating him and really getting him in there, and that's what I I would do. I would go with Sorokin if. He falters a bit. Okay, you have Varlamov for the next start. Whether you, I would say, regardless, after that, if you want to get Varlamov back in and make sure that he gets some reps so that he's still good, then okay. But go to Sorokin again after that next start, no matter what the outcome is with Varlamov. But Sorokin's got to play this next game. Anthony, uh, who do the Islanders have the next two games, you said? Nashville, Montreal. And just as a reminder, I was in Nashville this week. Uh, I made a video about my experience in Nashville. Can't wait to have these guys go see a game there because it is a great city. And I got to plug that. Also, it was just on the ticker. So shameless self-promotion, <laughs> unfortunately. That's what YouTube always is. What do you think about the Islanders? They're back o- <laughs> They're back over 500. Think this is the last time they're going to be under it the rest of the season? Throw it down in the comments below. Ilya Sorokin, should he be the number one? Plenty of things to ask questions about. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.